Dr. Francis Adedayo Faduile is a, a, the president of the Nigerian Medical Association and he's here to shed light on the many concerns associated with this current pandemic. He's joining us via Skype. Good evening, Dr. Francis. Are you there? Yeah, good evening. It's my pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Okay, so I will jump right into this conversation. Um, recently, I think how about how many days ago, we had um, the welcoming, we, or we saw the welcoming of 15 uh, medical doctors from China, you know, to come and help us combat um, the spread of the COVID-19 um, virus. So I am asking, is it for lack of preparedness of our medical personnel in Nigeria? Because a lot of people are raising eyebrows to that move by the Ministry of um, Health. Well, thank you very much. I do not think it would be very right if we say that they can have uh, the quote and unquote medical experts from China has come to help us to combat the COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria. Rather, what we have been informed is that the quote-unquote medical expert has come, have come around to share experience with us in Nigeria. Unfortunately, as you may have heard or seen, the Nigerian Medical Association is totally against their coming because we know that there are so many ways in which we can share experience and we can learn from their experience in China. Presently, I am in FCT in Abuja here. You are in a far distance kilometers away, and we are interacting. Yeah. We believe that through, through Zoom meeting, through other international uh, uh, IT, uh, techno technology, IT technology, yeah. we may be able to interact. So. We as Nigerian Medical Association is, is still we are still baffled with the main reason why these Chinese people have come to Nigeria. But I must stress that the Nigerian medical professionals, as well as nurses and those who are in the front line of the treatment of COVID-19, are doing marvelously well. Awesome. Those Nigerians that have been infected, many of them have been treated and they have been discharged. We have few that have died, and we know that those who have died, they are those people who have comorbidity that, were, uh, that has been established as one of the reasons why we have fatality or severity of COVID-19. So I must tell you that we are doing well the United Nations has uh, applauded Nigeria, and we should not forget that Nigeria is one of the countries that was able to eradicate Ebola as soon as it was uh, uh, brought to this country. And I agree with you, sir. Very, very true, sir. But I, if I may ask you a question, sir. The chi in China, over 3,000 health workers have been infected and 22 have died as a result of this illness of um, COVID-19. So do we have statistics in Nigeria currently of infected pers um, personnel or health personnel infected and that have died as well? Well, as it is, we have just one person that is a health personnel that, have di that has died as a result of COVID-19. And we have some other medical uh, specialists or medical practitioners who are either in the position of being in self-isolation or otherwise because of their contact with COVID-19 uh, patients while discharging their duties. I was made aware that we have had two of our members who have tested positive. And this uh, contact were when they were doing their duties as a medical practitioner. So, as it is, we are trying our best. We have given directive to our members nationwide to ensure that they follow international best practices and they ensure 
that they put on the necessary PPE before attending All right, so to any... Okay, Dr. Francis, now. we have an expert nurse right here in the studio with us, and she would like to ask you a question. Go ahead, Julimo. All right, uh, thank you very much. I, I just want to ask, because I'm yet to see the spousal relationship between the private and the public sector. Because I know that we have private practitioners, medical practitioners and nurse practitioners, and they run their facilities. So is there a plan on ground to integrate? Are they being integrated in this care? Because they are closer to the community. So that's the question that I have. Because the management of this, the fight of this pandemic requires that all hands be on deck. It is important for us to know that COVID-19 is a novel coronavirus infection, meaning that it has just been identified. And a lot of things are not yet known about this virus. And we have found out that it is a highly contagious virus. Even science has not been able to come out with all the necessary ways that this virus gets transmitted to other people. We know that it can be airborne. We know it can stay on some surfaces. And therefore, for the treatment and containment, it is believed that not all hospitals, not any hospital can take care of such uh, infection. Yeah, and yeah. that is why they have, uh, the, 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 the federal government and NCDC, as well as the Ministry of Health, has directed that any hospital that is to take care of COVID-19 positive patient must be properly accredited in such a way that patients or workers within that hospital will not unnecessarily expose themselves to that COVID-19, thereby becoming sources of infection to the general populace. Okay, so finally, Therefore, doctor. It is... <laughs> Dr. Francis, sorry to cut you because we're running out of time. If we say we want to give, um, what's it called, help to our medical personnel that are putting their lives on the line to fight this pandemic, what would you advise the government to be doing right now to as incentives for the health workers? We have discussed with the government and we have told them that it is important for the government to institute a comprehensive health, uh, uh, health insurance for them in case of uh, uh, disability or even death, because this war is a war we must win. Mm -hmm. And again, to have the government to ensure that the proper PPE are available, not only to the isolation centers, but also to, the, uh, to all the hospitals, accident and emergency units can be properly uh, uh, managed before being transferred, and we will be able to protect ourselves. Again, Beautiful. we Thank are you. also asking for incentives from the frontline staff so that they may be highly motivated to treat the, uh, uh, the COVID-19 positive. Awesome. For example, in Ghana, the government has to, 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 to say that there should be tax relief for all medical and dental practitioners as Fantastic. well as other health workers. Okay, so as to motivate them. All right, so thank you so much, Dr. Francis. We, 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 we'll, we'll keep checking on you to continue to understand how we can help our medical personnel better. Thank you so much for joining us on the show this evening. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. <laughs> All right. Mm. So, Julie Mo, we have too yeah. many questions mm. on WhatsApp. Let me just quickly take a few. Mm. So, Linda says, how do we get medical staff? How do we get them to have excellent service? That's um, from Linda. Leo is saying, Nigeria is more reactive than preventive. Yes, I think that's just absolutely. a comment. Yeah. Ada mm -hmm. says, I am surprised that isolation centers are more beautiful than the existing mm -hmm. medical <laughs> facilities. <laughs> Aliu is saying, I think the Chinese team could have shared their experience via online channel. And she is saying, I think we need to appreciate our medical team. Exactly. We must start driving a first Nigerian policy. So Beautiful. Nigeria first, first policy. policy. So what yes. do you think with all this conversation? Yes, I, I, absolutely. I, I agree. Yes, we need to um, 
Okay, let's start with the, the, the comment one. about the Nigerian Linda. So what, yes, what Linda, Linda say? was saying about customer experience, customers excellent customer experience. Yes, I I, I think it, that's my what I advocate for. We need to have our personnel trained. Now there are different, especially at this time, we're going to be dealing with uh, the the cases that present as positive. They will not be able to interact with their family, so you're going to be dealing with some kind of um, guilt, emotional some support. kind of emotional. Yes, you're going to need a lot of that, but for mm -hmm. the patient and the relatives, mm -hmm. so they need to be skilled uh, on a regular basis. We don't know how to integrate families in the course of care of a patient, so now a special training is required. So how do you manage relatives? You need to be careful about the comments that will come out of your mouth. mouth. One comment could send. That, that patient into a state that may that patient may not recover from. So a, a special specialized training is required in that regard. And then for the health workers themselves, they need to always, always constantly be in a state that would enable them render effective care. Yes. Now do you think that yeah. the health the to, nurse to, to the, the nurse patients. the nurses uh, and the other health workers, do you think that they actually are being tested right after they're done um, treating those the who are standard, COVID infected. The required infected. standard by the World Health Organization is this. Mm. Before you even, as you get to work, get an get assessment tested. done. After? Before you attend to a patient, ensure the pa you have done your assessment, the patient has been assessed because the outcome of that assessment will determine your level of preparedness. Do I need you, to, yeah. to don every, all my kit? Do I just mm. need the medical mask? Do I need the respirator N95, N95 mask? So these are the things. Then after you're done with that patient, you're supposed to undergo another assessment before you touch another patient. Before do you, have you to another think day. it's a tedious, even, a tedious wow. even at that, do we have enough N95 masks currently in Nigeria? Well, there have been donations. There's been donations. There have been donations. Uh, we're not I even concerned to, about I, the masks right yes, now. Yes, whether they are, It's know, even focusing we, more on... You know, because what you were talking about, the relationship, I, yes. I didn't see it that way. Because yes. I can use my word as mm -hmm. a nurse mm -hmm. to send somebody to, to, yes. to, to, to his to nine, yes. nine yes. feet on, yes. six feet six under. Feet. Because we should understand that the health workers are tensed already. Mm. It's like going to the war front. You're uh, going to the eye of the storm. So are you, are you, how prepared, how prepared now, are let you? Me, you could, let me, let me, yeah. let me, let me chip this in. Okay. There was a video of uh, a, um, a COVID-19 patient who was in uh, an isolation center. And this COVID-19 patient said that a nurse just came and dropped the mask for her and walked away without even coming close to her or engaging her, talking to her, that she felt like a plague. Not mm -hmm. like she was the she was infected, that she was like a plague. So do yes. you think that that was the right approach of a health worker? No, that isn't the, the right approach. Like I said, now the health workers, there has to be some kind of provision apart Even from monetary incentives and all of that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had recommended, because we have a pool of nurses, we have been, we've not rested. Sometimes we, we rarely would sleep. Mm -hmm. So we have been looking for means on how to keep our nurses in a healthy state of mind. Thank you. I was coming they there. Need That's true. What is the mental stability of the person the that person is that trying that is to attend to that you. case? Exactly. That's, that's, um, cost, that, that's cost, not that. They are not um, looking at that area patient. yet. And we've been, we've been that's on why the going that question to you. Yes. By the World Health Organization, we've mm -hmm. been, and we're trying to step the trainings down, and we're looking for interventions, different means through which we'll have contact with okay. mm -hmm. our nurses. That's right. Those so there. you are no, talking no, no, no. intervention, right? Mm -hmm. Because yes. we're seeing that, okay, the, the dangotes, the toddlers, you know, they are donating money and nobody is looking in this direction yeah. so imagine if for instance um, an incentive comes where you are empowered to go and help the nurses take on this training and prepare them yes. you know both mentally and physically and yeah. how to relate because yeah. customer service is key in it's this key. Is, is what you said exactly. now it's I'm key. here I never thought about customer service I never it's thought key. about because it there's is. somebody that's supposed to be helping to allay the fears of the family yeah. members there's somebody that's supposed to be helping to allay the fear of the, the patient, patient. You know? because you so, know you, COVID-19 is not a death sentence but when people hear about the, the negative figures mm. they are scared yeah, they are anxious, the, and the normal, the next thing someone will be thinking is, this, "I'm going to die." Why it's mind-boggling mostly is because of the fact that that people are uh, there is so much uncertainty around it. Yes, I think that's the, that's the yeah. reason why, and yeah. it's a, it's an unknown virus. Okay, so yes, somebody is sending a message. This looks like a foreign number. Good evening to you all in the studio. I just want to make this comment about the nose chasing out someone who is coughing, even okay. here in Germany. 
you cannot just go to the house doctor. You must go to the main hospital. My opinion about healthcare work is that they, they're supposed to be paying good money because society needs them more than they need the society. Wow. <laughs> so, you true. know, when somebody is coughing, yeah. you just start chasing after the person. Never yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that right now, in every fa any patient that walks into a facility is supposed to be treated as a suspected okay. case. Wow. So every facility ought to be prepared in one to form test or the them. other. Okay. That's one. Then secondly, each facility as designated maybe by the, by the uh, government, I think all facilities should have that isolation center, even if it's a small room, first of all, so that if this person walks in and you, you run an assessment, you discover that, oh, this is possibly a case of COVID-19. COVID. Push the person aside. Let the person be in that room. Let that room be designated for that purpose until proper test is done, a diagnosis is put in place, and the person would have to receive the best of care. So it's not just, oh, okay, mm -hmm. this, that, that. Just allay the person's fear and anxiety. We just want to be sure, mm -hmm. and this, that, that, that. Let the person be there. Then the okay. proper test so is one done. One final question. I know we are not healthcare workers, right? Mm -hmm. We're just regular citizens. As a nurse, how would you advise us? So for instance, if your, your sister comes down with a cold or your son comes down with this, comes out with that, what do you do? You know, I, we are not healthcare workers, but we can be trained on how to manage it before we now eventually take them mm -hmm. to the hospital, like in terms of how to protect ourselves mm -hmm. to be sure that nothing is being transmitted. Yes, first of all, uh, we've, been, we've been teaching uh, families, individuals, and we, uh, we, we're doing that on a regular basis. We should ensure hand hygiene. When okay. you find out that is mm -hmm. happening, if okay. the person is having some respiratory um, produce, you ensure mm -hmm. that hy respiratory hygiene is performed. Mm -hmm. There's been much emphasis on the hand hygiene, but we also have the respiratory hygiene as well. So how does the person cough? Now, we, we've done the coughing into the cuff of the elbow, but this person can be encouraged. If you don't have, you can't reach out to your handkerchief immediately. You can actually cough into your, your, your dress. Okay. So you do that. Yes, I, I, I do that sometimes. If I don't mm -hmm. have a hanky or I'm cooking so or whatever, you, yeah. rather than mm -hmm. if you can't do this, you can then I just into your go, dress. yes, oh. just trap okay. it there. Oh. It's okay. something, yes, that, okay. that can be done. And then if there's a room created, everyone should be at peace. The person needs love at that point. Just tell the person that, okay, we're going to put a call through to NCDC. Awesome. And the person is uh, placed in the awesome. room. Fluid should, mm. be, should be given constantly, to healthy meals. It's important that the immune system is built. And mm. we, are, we are advising that families should just go ahead, be proactive, take vitamin C. It does mm. a, a vitamin C on a daily basis, the children, the adults in the house. So these are some of the things that can be done while a, a call is put through. To, to the necessary quarters, yes. Thank okay. you so much, Julie yeah. Moore. Every time we have you, it's just a, <laughs> you're just loaded with so much information. Final question. Yeah. The health workers, are they going to be trained on the job because the COVID-19 is spreading rapidly, quickly? Yes, they've been, they've been, they, okay, trainings so it's, are ongoing. It's ongoing. Yes, awesome. trainings are ongoing. Awesome. We do it on a daily basis. Awesome. I just want to say thank you so much. <laughs> because pleasure. we really, really... And thank you for doing this. I've been bringing information <laughs> thank to the people. You. I mean, thank I mean you. for us, this is why we're on the show. We're exactly. not here to just mm -hmm. talk. We're here mm -hmm. to help people understand practicality on how to handle different situations. situations. Yesterday we talked yeah. about SMEs. Today we're focusing on health workers because we know you guys are the frontliners to this yeah. to this war. So thank you so much, Julie, for thank all pleasure. you're doing. Thank, thank you, you to Dr. Bayo, Samuel Oga, and thank you to Dr. Francis you know, that joined us uh, from Abuja. Thank you so much. Uh, I think this repeat is a must for everybody to watch. Please watch a repeat uh, of this show tomorrow at 3 p.m. You can catch all the repeats on Mondays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 3 p.m. as well. It's been a very insightful conversation. It's Thank you so much, Isi. You're on fire today. <laughs> I mean, she's just jumping and jumping. <laughs> All right, so keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Prayers don't build good infrastructures. They don't develop countries. They don't improve poor health care system or the educational system. God has placed man in charge of all. That's from Oyekule Bamiboye. So let us use what God has given to us and build a better world. Now, enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night. Stay safe. Stay safe. <laughs>